Hello and welcome to a new EasyDigitals.com video tutorial. Remember, you can get all of our high quality Photoshop and Photoshop Elements templates at EasyDigitals.com. Just click on the Products button. And don't forget to sign up for our monthly newsletter. We give away free templates and tutorials each and every month, along with product update info and coupons. Okay, Kim, what easy tutorial are you going to show us today? Today, I'm going to go over the layered backdrops and just give you an overview of the different components that you'll see on each. And I have one of the backdrops up. Usually when you pull it up, it will have the place extracted player here selected on the layers palette. That way when you pull in your extracted player, it'll go into the right layer. A lot of the layers have a little FX next to it and you can double click that and it will bring up a dialog box. There'll be a checkbox on the style that was used and as you can see when I turn it off you can see what it was doing and the stroke is turned off and you can select that and get another dialog box where you can change many things to change the effect of the style. Another thing you can do is you can change the blending mode of the style and you can select this and then if you press your down arrow key it will go through all the different blending mode options and that's another way that you can make it a little bit different. You can also change the opacity of every layer and every style. So if I came up here to the blending options default and I turned it completely off you can see what it's doing or I can reduce the fill opacity. So the stroke and the drop shadow are still there but the fill is gone. And you can change the color of the stroke, you can change it to a gradient or a pattern, you can change it from outside to inside. So you can see each one of these components has a lot of things that you can play with to make the product unique. Now back over to the layers, you can change the opacity of each layer. You can change the blending mode of each layer, again by selecting one and then arrowing through. You can also, if you have your transform tool selected, you can come over to these corners and you can, oops, you can, re you can change the way it looks like that or you can rotate. If you press your shift key while you grab this little corner, you can resize and you can change the text to anything you want it to say. You just press your type tool and come over and change the words to anything you want. And at the same time that that tool is selected, you can also change the color and you can change the, whether it's right or left justified, centered. You can change the size individually. You can change the font. So there's really a lot of different things that you can do that with that. Each of these little design elements can also be changed. And if you are trying to select an element and it keeps selecting a different element that you don't want it to select, then you can click the lock key on the element that you don't want it to select. And then you can come over and you should be able to select the element that you want. And you can resize these. So I'm pressing enter after I resize it, you can duplicate them and you can come up to edit, transform, you can flip it, you can you can warp it with you can distort, skew, warp, and you can also add a mask. These already have a mask. So, you would come over to your brush tool with your mask highlighted and if like if you wanted to hide a part of it, you'd have to have the black on top here then you can hide part of it. And you can do that with any of the layers. You can add a full-sized photo. I added a place to add a full-sized photo, but you can obviously, you can move these layers around to create different looks. Sometimes you'll want some certain element on top. So you'll need to drag them to move them around. And like this one is locked, so I'm gonna unlock it and you can drag it to wherever you need it to get it to look the way you want it to look. If you wanted the words on top of somebody, then you might need to move them up higher. Or if you want them behind, the words behind somebody, then you would move the words 
further down. Also, a lot of the posters have this little box where you can change the color. And so you, I have web only, so I'm going to turn that off. And then you can just change it to any color that you want. The, sometimes they'll have the color fill to, say, to change just certain elements. And then there's also this hue saturation layer, which you need to turn on and then double click. And then you can change the color of the entire poster and you can change the intensity of the color all the way to black and white and you can change the lightness and the darkness of that or you can hit colorize which gives it a completely different look so there's really a lot that you can play with on each of these posters as far as these um, for this particular one as far as these light trails you will have to change each one of these individually which I will talk about more specifically on that tutorial for that product. So I hope that gives you a pretty good overview of the layered backdrops and gives you a better idea of how everything works and I will show you individually how to use each poster. Hey that was easy. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this tutorial or any of our products you can always reach us at easydigitals.com. Have a creative day.